Welcome to Snow Covered Wisconsin, America's Dairyland, and welcome to the Hoof GP YouTube channel. You're joining me on part two of my American escapades, and you're joining me as I run shotgun with Aaron Lavoie on our way to a dairy farm milking 1,350 cows. So we're right in the heart of America's Dairyland. We are in the middle of Wisconsin and you're joining us on our way to one of Aaron Lavoie's regular hoof trimming customers. I'm really, really keen to see the environment in which these cows are kept in because if I believe all the social media posts, they are really not kept in a good environment at all. So I'm really keen to see if that is true, why it's true, if there's any weight behind it, or what the real story is behind the American dairy industry. So stick with me, enjoy the video, and smash that subscribe button. So this is a 1,300 cow dairy, and Aaron actually trims here with Pedro every Wednesday. This is a fantastic farm, and I don't really need to say it, but the feet are in fantastic condition as well. It's really, really good to see these cows in such good condition and Aaron's work paying off so well. So here at Burlings Dairy, they have a 20 aside rapid exit Melvin Clara, which is seriously clean with some seriously hard-working guys in it. Behind me, this may not seem significant in foot care, but this collecting yard here, this is a large-scale dairy farm with a relatively small collecting yard. And that helps to cut down on the pressure on their feet and standing times, which is really important. There's too many times I've seen large-scale farms with huge collecting areas, and the cow at the back could be standing there for an hour and a half sometimes, which is no use for feet whatsoever. So uh, there are, I don't know, three or four hundred cows in this barn, and it's deathly silent. Listen, all I can hear is a few birds, to be honest, and the cows look seriously happy too. They've got air float walls. So behind me, you can see over there, they're temperature control curtains which move up and down, like the, similar to the first farm we were at that had the Velox windows on the roof. It's amazing how quiet it is. Yeah. You can hear the chain on the alley scraper. So Aaron here milks at the... No, he doesn't. <coughs> so Aaron I've never milked a cow here, ever. He lies. So Aaron here trims at this farm every Wednesday and they're milking around 1350 cows so around 1700 cows including the dry ones. How many are you trimming here? Between 65 and Between 75? Between 65 and 75 cows per week. Okay and you think that's bang on or too many or could they be doing a bit more? Or? Right on. They, these guys are on a really good maintenance schedule. Every dry cow that gets dried off this week will be trimmed next week. Okay. Every cow in 110 days in lactation will be trimmed and every heifer 45 days prior to fashioning will be trimmed so you dry off and trim a week after dry off yes okay that's interesting a lot of people for them it's the convenience that rather than running around to all of the pens to find the two dry cows here the three dry cows there they just wait until they dry them off through the milking and then one guy goes to the dry cow pen and brings us the group of dry cows. Okay. So it works easier for them. Yeah. What's the lameness like here then? Is it good or? When I did the average for this farm recently, we were putting on less than 2% wraps and less than 1% blocks. Okay. And that counts the steers that are not maintenance trimmed. Yeah. So really, these guys are getting, they have less than 1% lameness in the cows. Yeah. So these guys are rearing their bull calves as well aren't they? Yes, yeah. And what contributes to the lameness being good here? Is it purely down to you being good? Is it a combination of loads Everything of Everything is managed or? to the finest here. Everything. Okay. Um, their attention to detail of maintenance trimming and I would say one of the other big, big factors here is early detection. Nobody finds cows 
They'll bring us 10 cows every week that are lame cows, and they come running to the pen. Well, we can look at them and we laugh, but that's our lame cows. When you say... And there won't be one lame cow in the group. When you say early detection, how are they detected? Anybody on the farm who... Anybody working here, it's their responsibility to identify any cows with an issue. And any cow that, that's caught taking a couple poor steps or doesn't seem perfect, so you're gonna get wrote down and checked. This barn is also sand bedded, which is massive for so many things. It reduces mastitis, reduces lameness, it helps with grips. You don't get as many cows that do the splits. Because for you guys who watch who aren't farmers, a big thing with Holstein cattle is they're not as strongly built as beef cattle. So if they're on slippery surfaces at all, their ligaments maybe aren't quite as strong as that as a beef. So they can do the splits quite easy. So it's about managing that and about reducing the risks to make sure that these cows are as comfortable as possible all the time. To show you guys exactly how calm it is in here, I'm gonna shut up and just walk down here really quietly and just listen to it. So when it comes to foot bathing, Aaron, what are these guys doing in the way of foot bathing and why are they doing it? This farm has no warts, no digital dermatitis on it at all. Like I can guarantee you, I don't know the last time we've ever wrapped a wart or dealt with dermatitis here. Their foot bath would be totally inadequate anywhere else. But the hygiene is so good here that they're getting away with way less foot bath and better results than most farms that throw the kitchen sink at yes. the foot bath and can't control dermatitis. I find the same. Like people say, what's the perfect foot bath and recipe? There isn't one, is there? These guys run 1,800 cows through a foot bath. Is that right? And it's got about half as much copper as I would recommend. So if you guys look at these cows, and I'll just show you the one standing right next to me. I haven't moved. This cow right here, spotless. And that is what contributes to warts, mortal arrow, or digital dermatitis, whatever you want to call it, being massively reduced to some farms that really do have problems. So in terms of production, these cows, cows fluctuate between 98 pounds and 103 pounds per day of milk, which is about 45 kilos. In terms of the UK, that is like sky high. I don't have any farms which are quite there. I do have some that are very close, but not quite at that level. And that's down to a combination of a huge amount of different factors. And I'm sure you guys can see in this video how well catered for these cows are. The guys in the parlor are being really calm and quiet. That's what leads to these cows being really calm and quiet. So I know you guys, if you see my videos, then animal abuse videos come up as well. We're in Wisconsin, we're at a big, big dairy, and these cows are as well looked after as any cows I've ever seen. They really, really are. And this is on quite a large scale as well, which it's not easy to do, guys. Plus it's their livelihood which they want to look after. This is a multi-generation farm. They take a lot of pride in, in their cows. They look after these cows like, like their family. The owner here, Mike, pretty much built this whole place from scratch. He came home from Vietnam and started milking, I believe around 35 cows. And he lost his arm in a corn picking accident right after he got home. And everybody says, you're not going to be able to farm. You're not going to be able to to be anything and he's completely built this from scratch. He's kind of proved those guys wrong. <laughs> There's no doubt at all that Burling's Holstein Dairy Farm is a seriously impressive farm. But for me, it's not impressive because of the numbers and it's not impressive because of the amount of milk they're producing, which is extremely high, obviously. But it is impressive because of their deeply rooted passion for the dairy industry. They absolutely love their cows. They take huge amounts of passion and pride in really, really making sure that their cattle are as comfortable as possible. When I was there, I met one of the owner's daughters and she knew every little last detail about the farm. And more than that, every little last detail mattered to her and the cow's comfort was absolutely paramount. It was at the forefront of everything they're doing there. So guys, my small investigation into the American dairy industry concludes that actually the cow comfort welfare standards over there are extremely high and there's something that a lot of us could strive towards. Guys, thanks very much for watching. If you haven't already done it, smash that subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Catch you on the next one.